Hello YouTube, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Tina and I make videos on lifestyle, home, and DIY projects every single week. Today's video is going to be a really fun one because I'm going to be trying out different DIY projects from other creators here on YouTube and Instagram. And I'm really excited to share some of their pages with you guys because I think that you will really enjoy their content. So today's video is going to be a little bit different than my normal DIY tutorial videos. This one is going to be a lot more relaxed. I really just wanted to DIY with you guys and really show you the process of DIYing a project, especially when you're following someone else's instructions. And one thing that I would like to mention is that I did not go out to buy extra supplies. I'm just using what I have at home. So let's get into the first project. All right, so we're going to start by moving this camera and then also setting up my overhead camera. So if it is in my shot, I apologize in advance. I just want to make sure that you guys can see exactly what I'm doing since this isn't going to be a full on tutorial. Okay, let's move you. Is this good enough? Okay. I think this works. I'm going to set up my camera now. Okay, so I have my phone set up right here. You can't really see it, so that's a good thing. And hello. This is actually like a phone arm holder and it's really great for overhead shots. So if you're ever interested in making your own videos with your iPhone, I would highly suggest having a setup like this one. But besides the point, I'm going to get out my materials and get started on the first project. All right, so I have my glue gun heating. I always forget to turn it on before I do a project, but I have it ready to go. But the first DIY project that I'm going to do is by none other than DIY Dahlia. And if you haven't seen her channel, you definitely should. She has some amazing makeover videos. She recently just did a bathroom makeover and it looks freaking amazing. And the tutorial that I'm following today is actually her thrift flip one. And this project is super simple. I actually went to the thrift store not too long ago and I saw these napkin rings. And once I saw these, I knew right away that I had to do her project. So I only have four. In her tutorial, she actually has a lot more and they're a lot skinnier. And you'll also need some air dry clay, paint, candles, and a hot glue gun. And this project is super simple, but also looks amazing. So first things first, I'm going to lay down my craft paper. This table has gone through a lot with me and I definitely want to protect it as best as I can. So I always lay down some craft paper. I don't think my hot glue gun is ready yet. Not even remotely ready. Here is what they look like up close. They look kind of Christmassy. I'm just realizing now that it kind of looks like a peacock pattern, but these can definitely use an upgrade. So I'm going to follow along with her tutorial and make it into something more beautiful. So in Dahlia's tutorial, she actually glued all these pieces together with a hot glue gun. So that's what I'm going to do. And since I only have four, I'm going to just put two and two together just to create two little candle holders. And this project is honestly pretty simple and she makes it easy to follow. So that's what I really love about her videos. And for each one of these tutorials, I will have them linked down below so you can follow along as well. But I'm going to start gluing and I'm using my crappy little Michaels glue gun here. It's just the only one that I have and I definitely want to upgrade soon to like a wireless one because I think that would make my life so much easier. And then put those together. I'm going to try to match it up as best as I can. And there is some glue like that is kind of coming out of the seams between the two but I think that after it dries you can definitely kind of just like scrape that off so that it looks a lot more seamless but this looks pretty good so far and then I'm gonna do the other one or maybe I should try doing it on the inside more just so that you don't see it as much I feel like that's the thing with like DIY videos, like everything looks so simple until you try it and then you're like, oh, um, yeah, that was a little bit harder than I thought. Okay, this one looks a lot better and that's because, oh, okay, I just messed it up. Oh my God, <sighs> please be okay. Like I was saying, sometimes DIYs do not go according to plan. So let me just do this again. Hopefully this works better. 
So I stand corrected. I watched the tutorial before and I just realized that she used E6000 glue and then she wiped it off. So that's how she was able to get it so cleanly. I chose hot glue and now I'm going to clean off the corners a little bit so that it looks a lot more clean. And I'm just going to use my nails and kind of dig at it a little bit. I should have watched more closely. I'm sorry, Dahlia. But this is working out pretty well, just like peeling it off a little bit at a time. Also, I wanted to note that I'm using the Gorilla Glue hot glue. So the bond between the rings is going to be a lot better than just using regular hot glue. So that's kind of how I'm able to kind of go around this whole thing and not separate it as I'm trying to take off the glue. So for the next part of the tutorial, you will need some air dry clay. And to be honest, I'm trying to use this thing up before I move. But what you're gonna wanna do is just to put the clay inside the hole of the neck and rings, and that way your candle will fit in there nicely. And I believe that she put it in through the whole thing. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just gonna take a little bit from my tub here and then just fit it through the hole. Kind of just molding it in there through the bottom and making sure that I even fill the bottom. And this project is definitely one that you're gonna wanna do and let sit overnight just so that the clay will dry really nicely. I think I'm gonna finish up my whole tub with this project, so I'm really happy about that so I don't have to pack this when I leave. And that's pretty perfect. Oh my god, I just realized that I didn't even say in a video yet. Thank you guys so much for 20,000 subscribers. I am in like such disbelief that we just hit that milestone, especially since we just hit 10 like three weeks ago, I think. It's just so crazy to me and I'm so grateful and so thankful that you guys are following me on this channel and I really hope that you guys enjoy these projects. So thank you guys so, so much for supporting and just subscribing and sending me so much love on all my projects and videos. It really does mean the world to me. So thank you guys. <sighs> Okay, so this is looking pretty good so far, and I know that she kind of sands the top of it, so I'm just going to leave it as is. But before we let it dry, I'm going to stick the candle into the middle of it, and I ended up finding these pillar candles at the thrift store for only $1. So this is just a standard pillar candle. I think it's going to be a little bit too long for the napkin rings that I have. This would be super tall in here. Well, I'm just gonna use scissors and hope that this works okay. Oh, cool. So I cut off about three inches of the bottom and I think it'll look so much better in here. So what I'll do next is just to stick it into the middle here and kind of create an indent. And you'll see that some of the clay is gonna start to come out, which is totally fine because then we could just take some of it off later. I'm gonna gently pull it out. And now we have a nice indentation so that you could put future candles in this candle holder. I think that looks great. And now I'm gonna let that dry so then we can paint it tomorrow. Update on the project. So I just created my second one. So now I have these two little guys, but I'm gonna let these dry and then move on to the second project. I don't know if that's going to be confusing if I come back to these the next day. But I kind of wanted to show you guys how it is creating DIYs in real time because a lot of times you see everything done continuously, but sometimes I have to wait a day or even two days for air dry to dry completely. I hope that this video gives you a little bit of an insight behind the scenes on what it actually takes to make a DIY video. Major props to all the DIY creators here on this platform. It definitely takes a lot of time to work on your projects and also film it and then do the directions for it and everything but it is so fun every step of the way. All right, so for my second project, it is a really fun one by Erica from Peony and Honey, and she runs this beautiful Instagram account. She just started posting on her YouTube channel and she posted four really nice planters that you can create from things from the Dollar Tree. So that's exactly what I did. I went to Dollar Tree and I picked up these two bowls 
and that's literally all you really need for this project. It is so easy, but the end result is so beautiful. And if you haven't seen her video yet, definitely check it out because she has three other really amazing planters on there. And I definitely want to make every single one of them. But for this one, I'm just going to work on the one that I like the most. So the first step in her tutorial is to spray paint these. Unfortunately, I don't have a spray paint that I want these to be a color in. So of course I'm going to create a baking soda paint and that's kind of like my new obsession right now. And I know that you guys really love this hack. I don't know why I'm still holding these, so I'm gonna put them down. But in her tutorial, she used this really beautiful terracotta spray paint and then she also used a texturizing spray paint, which I'm dying to get my hands on. I just don't really want to buy new supplies right now. So that's what we're gonna go with. I'm going to make some baking soda paint and then paint this entire bowl. So I picked up some of my favorite terracotta tones right now and it is from Folk Art and Deco Art. This one right here is a little bit more pink and this one is a little bit more burnt orangey. So I'm going to mix the two together and then I think I'm also going to add in this red color called the Chipotle. And it's just this gorgeous deep red color. I think it's going to look really nice and kind of take away a little bit more of the pinkness in this paint. So I'm going to mix that up first. And you want to mix up a decent amount of paint because when you're custom mixing paint, you definitely don't want to run out of it. Otherwise, it's going to be really hard to match that color later. And I have definitely made that mistake before. So I always like to make a lot more than I need. And then I'm just going to mix with my palette knife. I always really like to mix with something other than a paintbrush because with the paintbrush, you can get all the different color streaks in there. And that's definitely not what you want when you want everything to be one single color. Already looking pretty orange. So I'm going to add in a little bit more of that red. And I feel bad sometimes because in my videos, sometimes I mix colors initially. And then when I go to paint it on the item, it's like totally not the color that I was going for. So I always end up doing like a different color in the second coat. So if you guys ever notice that in my videos, I apologize in advance. I don't mean to, but I'm just so picky sometimes when it comes to colors, but I feel like that's life and that's part of the DIY process is just figuring out what you like and making some mistakes along the way and then fixing it. And it's totally fine because paint is something that's easily fixable. All right, so I'm pretty happy with my color now. I'm going to add in the baking soda. Why is it on the floor? So now that I like the color, I'm going to add in my baking soda. And again, I really like to add a lot here just to add some of that texture, especially since in Erica's tutorial, she has a very nice texture to her planters. So that's what I want to emulate with my paint here. I'm just going to give that a really nice stir. And I'm going to add more baking soda because I really want a lot of texture in here. The bowls I picked up are the same exact ones that Erica picked up. So I know that this project is going to turn out as beautiful as her project did. So I'm going to flip it over and start painting with my paintbrush. And I just love working with baking soda paint. You really want to just work in one direction doing a very nice thin layer because you'll see like if you try to go over it if it's not dry already it'll start kind of coming off of each other and that's what you want to avoid so make sure that you're working in small layers when you're doing the baking soda technique i'm going to put it on top of a bottle Okay, I think that works a million times better. Oh my gosh, I should have done this from the beginning. So I'm done with my first bowl. Here's how it's looking. Super textured, just like how I wanted it to be. And then I have another bottle and I'm just going to do the same exact thing. Okay, so now I'm done. I have two really nice bowls ready to be dried. And what's nice about this paint is that it dries pretty quickly. So I was able to do two coats in one day before. So I'm just gonna set this aside for maybe like an hour or two and then come back to it 
but it's looking so good and I hope that it looks like Erica's because hers looks so good and I can't wait to put the remaining of my plants in here to style it because I sold a majority of my plants already and it makes me so sad to think about. But I think I have one plant left that will look really nice in this planter so I can't wait to style this when I'm done. So I let these dry and gave it some time and they're already looking really good. We just have to get the second coat onto them. Also another tip that I want to give you guys is to make sure that you cover this while you're letting your piece dry that way your paint won't dry out so i just took the plastic wrap off and it looks pretty good still and that way you can continue to work on your piece with the same exact paint without it drying out on you and i'm just gonna go back in with a second coat here and i'm already loving the texture of this so much so as you can see the texture of this is really nice and grainy and that is exactly what we want. You can leave the brush strokes showing if you want. If you want it to be a lot smoother, I would say to do longer, broader strokes and that way you won't see it as much. I don't mind it either way, so I'm just going to continue painting along the whole bowl for both of them and then I will come back to them tomorrow and finish them up. Hello YouTube! So it is now the next day. Now I'm going to move back to Dahlia's project with the candle holders and they are just about ready to be sanded. So in her project, she sanded off the top a little bit and then she spray painted them, but I do not have spray paint. So what I'm going to do is just to use some regular acrylic paint and then use some type of sealant on them. And I think that they are looking pretty cute so far. We just have to sand the top of these. Chair creaks so much. So I'm just going to use a sanding block that I got. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I'm just going to use a sanding block that I got from Dollar Tree and just lightly sand it on the top. And this is really going to help smooth it out. If you don't want to do too much sanding, you can also wet this and make it pretty smooth. But I'm just going to sand it out just because I do see some bumps in here and this is going to be a great solution. These are looking pretty good, so now I'm going to start painting them. So I'm just going to use this paint by Deco Art. It is in the color Dried Clay. It's just this really nice pinky terracotta color. So I'm just going to put it on this plastic plate. If you ever get takeout and they come with these plastic lids, you should definitely use them for paints because it works really nicely. So I'm not going to do any custom mixing for this, which is kind of nice. And I'm just going to go straight onto the candle holder and give it one smooth coat. And I think this is gonna take two or three coats to get it all covered, just because the design on here is pretty dark. So I'm just gonna give both of these a coat of paint and then come back to them and give them a second coat. My two projects look so funny, kind of just drying in the background. But while those are drying, we are ready to work on our third project. And this one is from Katie Bookster here on YouTube. I've been meaning to make this project and when her tutorial came out, I knew that I had to make it. And it is the perfect piece to style your home with without breaking the bank because it just requires some craft paper, a long stick of some sort, and some folding techniques that I'm definitely going to have to refer back to her video to get this right. I've been seeing these everywhere online and instead of paying for the actual dry thing. You can emulate that with craft paper. I'm going to pop up her tutorial really quickly so that I make sure that I follow directions so that I don't make mistakes like I did in the first project. She just posted this a week ago and hers came out really cute. So I'm going to watch it again really quickly. So I just watched her tutorial again and I love her videos because they are so clear and they are so nice and clean to watch. But what she did was kind of find the center point of her paper and then she created a triangle dome shape on the paper and then cut it out. So that's what I'm gonna do with my piece of paper right now. So first I'm just going to cut my paper. Since my paper is quite small, I'm just going to measure up seven inches and kind of just mark it off. And then from there, I'm going to find the center point of my paper. And the easiest way to do that is just to fold it in half. So that's what I'm going to do because my paper is not perfectly straight. So I'm just going to fold it in half instead. And then that way I can find the center point right here. 
around seven inches above. And then what she did was kind of create a dome triangle shape from either edge. So that's what I'm going to do. And then the next thing you want to do is just to cut that out. So I'm just going to go kind of carefully so that I have a nice triangular dome shape just like Katie did in her tutorial. But like she mentioned, if you don't get it perfect on both sides, you can always cut it off later. So now we have our triangle all ready to go and I'm just going to fold that in half like Katie did in her tutorial. And that way you can kind of see where the excess paper is and you can just cut that right off so that they match. Okay, so I just referred back to her tutorial and basically what you're going to do is do an accordion fold starting from the center outwards. So I'm starting to do my fold and as I'm doing it, I'm gonna make sure that I line the straight edge of it all together just to make sure that it is nice and even. And I'm also going to make sure that I crease my paper really nicely. So I folded up one side and this is what it's looking like and I can already see the shape of it. So if you kind of see like this is the one half of it and then you're just going to repeat the same exact thing on the other side. I love doing DIYs like this because they are so simple but they are so aesthetic and like trendy, things that you'll see at like Urban Outfitters or Anthropology. But you really can just use things that you have at home already just to create them. So after creating the main palm leaf, she used a dowel and some macrame to kind of cover the dowel up and use that as the stem of the frond. You could leave it as is with the dowel like this, but I'm going to follow the tutorial and use the macrame. So I have my four millimeter macrame and I'm just going to hot glue this onto the stick. I'm going to wrap this about three fourths of the way down just so that I could stick on the dowel without any macrame on it because the one that I'm using is pretty thick on top. So I'm just gonna leave a few inches off at the bottom and then just snip it right off. And then what you wanna do is take the center point of where your leaf is and just glue it to the stick. Then just slide that in and hold it down for a little. Also want to make sure that I get the glue on this top part as well. And I love what she did with the macrame because it really adds so much texture to this and it just makes it a little bit more unique. So the last thing you really want to do is to kind of spread this out a little bit just to give it more of a palm leaf shape. To finish off this project, she took a strip of the craft paper and just put it around the bottom end of the leaf and that really finishes it off. So this is how it's looking. It is so cute. I'm going to make a second one and make it larger. Now that we completed this project, it's time to go back to these projects because they are now dry. I hope that this gives you an insight into how DIY videos are made because a lot of times it is waiting for paint to dry and working on other projects during that time. So I hope that this video was not too confusing, but it will all make sense at the end and all the projects will be styled and beautiful. So. Let's get back into the first project that we started with. Hello from VoiceOver Tina. So to finish off the candle holder, the last step I'm going to do is to add some speckled paint to the candle holders. And here I'm going to use a toothbrush and a paintbrush to flick the paint on. And I'm just using the colors brown, black, and cream to do this. Mm -hmm. 
To complete the ceramic planter, all you need to do is to glue them together. And here I'm using the Gorilla Glue hot glue sticks to make a really strong bond. And that's all there is to it. Now that all the projects are complete, here's the final reveal. Oh my gosh, I am so happy with all of the pieces. They all turned out so good. Big thank you to Dahlia, Erica, and Katie for letting me recreate their DIYs, and I am such huge fans with each one of them. So please make sure to check out their channels and their Instagrams, all linked down below. I will also have a direct link to all the tutorials that I followed so that you guys can follow them at home, and also check out all their other DIY projects in the same videos because they're all amazing. I know this video was a little bit different from my usual DIY videos, so I hope Hope that you guys liked DIYing with me and enjoyed the process along the way. I made some mistakes, I fixed them, and now they're okay. And that's honestly part of the process in creating DIYs. The most important part is enjoying the process and I really loved creating each one of these. Let me know in the comments down below which one you guys liked best and which ones you guys are inspired to recreate as well. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't already. I make videos every single week. And don't forget to subscribe to everyone that I mentioned down below as well because they deserve all the love in the world. I have two two kitchen related videos coming up, so I hope that you guys are excited for those. I'm so excited to show you guys what I do to the kitchen. Last thing to plug is my Instagram, so follow me on there if you haven't already. I love getting DMs from everyone and just hearing your suggestions and ideas and photos. So if you wanna connect with me, go ahead and DM me on Instagram and I'll get back to you. And that is it for today's video. Stay inspired guys and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.